Before you know what your calling is, you must believe you are called to something. It doesn't matter if you know what. In order to cultivate awareness, you must be willing to act, to step out and see what happens. And once you are convinced that purpose will not find you, that you will have to go in search of it, you are ready. Welcome to Philosopher Insights, the podcast that delivers wisdom in minutes a day that you can put into practice daily and strive to master over a lifetime. The podcast committed to sharing ideas that encourage you to bridge the gap between who you are today and the person you aspire to be in the future. Hi, my name is Herb Lamba and welcome to my podcast where I will share practical insights from the world's best authors. Knowledge isn't power, applied knowledge is. The quest to become the best version of you starts right now. Hi, and welcome to Philosopher Insights. My name is Herb Lamba. Today we're discussing the art of work, a proven path to discovering what you were meant to do. The author is Jeff Goins, and the book is published in 2015. I wanted to share a number of my favorite insights from this book, beginning with what makes up a calling, awareness, practice, the myth, the power of pivot, the portfolio life, and true mastery. So let's start with the introduction. Quote, what I've come to understand is that finding your purpose is more of a path than a plan. It involves twists and turns that you never expected. Ultimately, these surprises lead you to your destiny. And once you arrive at what you thought was the destination, you realize it's only another leg in the journey. This book is a description of that path, as well as the steps it takes to navigate it. Everyone, it seems, is searching for a purpose for something to satisfy their deepest desires. I believe that something is a calling. What is a calling? You will hear me use the word interchangeably with the terms vocation and life's work. But quite simply, it is the reason you were born. When I began working on this project, I thought I knew what the process of pursuing a dream looked like. But what I found out surprised me. Discovering your calling, it turns out, isn't quite so simple. The journey looks different from each person, but there are some common themes that consistently emerge. The Art of Work was not the book I intended to write, but it ended up being the one I was supposed to write. A calling is like that too, I suppose. This is not a book about miracles. It is a book about finding your calling, about how you discover what you were born to do. A calling is that thing that you can't not do, an answer to the age-old question, what is should I do with my life, end quote. That is from the author's note, and it kicks off a book filled with inspiring stories and insights blended together to help anyone discover what they were truly put on this earth to do. The Art of Work is written like an instruction manual to find your vocation by examining your passions, connecting with them to the needs of the world, and building a legacy that is much bigger than yourself. I thoroughly enjoyed this book, and I'm honored to share a few of my favorite insights. Insight number one, what makes up a calling? Quote, after encountering hundreds of stories from people who found their calling, I've identified seven common characteristics, each illustrated in the subsequent chapters. Each chapter, which tells at least one person's story, is based on a theme. One, awareness. Two, apprenticeship. Number three, practice. Number four, discovery. Number five, profession. Number six, mastery. And number seven, legacy. You might want to think of these as steps, but they are more like overlapping stages that once begun, continue for the rest of your life, end quote. I would urge you to read this book to go into depth on these seven characteristics. Goins has broken up this book into three sections, preparation, plus action, plus completion. Your life to this point has likely been filled with surprises and setbacks that has made you question whether you are on track with your life's purpose, or is your life just a complete mess with no real direction or meaning. Every life has meaning, and that includes you. You cannot control what life throws your way, but you can control your response. Going suggests that this is how we close the gap to discovering our purpose. You learn to let go of what you think you deserve, and you begin to accept what is. Insight number two, awareness. Quote, before you know what your calling is, you must believe you are called to something. It doesn't matter if you know what. In order to cultivate awareness, you must be willing to act, to step out and see what happens. And once you are convinced that purpose will not find you, 
that you will have to go in search of it, you are ready. Until you make this choice, though, you will feel frustrated seeing people succeed and chalking it up to luck or some unfair advantage. And in doing this, you will deceive yourself. Before you begin your life's work, you need to prepare. Chances come to us all, but only those who are ready recognize them. You don't need some big plan. You just need to be a little dissatisfied. That's what awareness is, a sense that something more is possible, end quote. As I was reading this, I literally had chills. I felt like the author had been following my life and was taking notes. I admittedly lacked awareness and I froze for many years because I mistakenly thought that my purpose or calling would find me. I remember the day I finally decided to take a step because I was no longer able to bear the pain of that knot in my stomach urging me to start pursuing a life of meaning. Quote, Most people waste the best years of their life waiting for an adventure to come to them instead of going out and finding one. They succumb to the status quo and dream of life being different someday. Plagued by indecision, they wait, unsure of the right path to follow. As they wait, they miss an opportunity to live. The smart choice is to move, to not hold out for a better time, and choose a direction now. End quote. Absolutely. Goins described my life perfectly in that passage, and I'm sure it resonates with millions of people around the world. I don't know where you find yourself today, but if every fiber in your body tells you that you are meant to do more, then I would urge you to take a step, run some experiments, and purchase your one-way ticket to a meaningful life. Please, don't wait for the golden ticket, or until you know what you're supposed to do. Just begin. Quote, We all have some understanding of what we're supposed to do with our lives. We may not realize it, or perhaps we lost it, but it's there waiting to be uncovered. What we need, then, is not a map, but a shovel. A set of tools to start digging. I used to think a calling was something you just knew you had, and if you didn't know, then you weren't called. But I've come to understand that that's not the case at all. A calling is what you have when you look back at your life and make sense of what it's been trying to teach you all along. End quote. Just awesome. We don't need a map to discover our purpose. We need a shovel. We need a tool that allows us to start digging into various things in our lives to make the all-important discovery. Discovering your calling takes work. If you are committed to discovering it, be prepared for a fear-filled journey that may last the rest of your life. As Goins says, the entire process begins with awareness. Listening to your life is where the discovery of your calling begins, but that is not where it will end. Your ears can only take you so far because at a certain point, your hands have to do the rest of the work. Insight number three, practice. Quote, It's easy to practice when the activity is something we enjoy. But what do you do when the excitement runs out and your strength disappears? What do you do when the first thrill of entering a new vocation begins to wane? Do you give up? Or do you push through the pain and make your way to mastery? This is where experts differ from the rest of us. They recognize the resistance we all feel, but instead choose to see it as a sign of how close they are to their goal. Disciplining themselves, they deliberately lean into the most difficult parts when most people tend to quit. We have come to call these people geniuses or prodigies without fully understanding the work that it takes to reach such a status. But the truth is, what's in them just might be in all of us, end quote. Some people live their lives in so much fear that they never venture out and try anything. It's all too risky. Others will step off the ledge and give it a serious try. But once they encounter an extended period of resistance, they fall apart and quit. Let's engage in life like we did when we were a child. A child is full of courage and not afraid of failing or looking bad in the eyes of others. If we don't, we run the risk of settling for the good enough life, rather than tapping into our greatness. Goins refers to this type of intentional practice that is required to succeed as painful practice. In his great book, Bounce, author Matthew Syed refers to this as purposeful practice. Quote, When most people practice, they focus on the things that they can do effortlessly. Erickson has said, Expert practice is different. 
It entails considerable, specific, and sustained efforts to do something you can't do well, or even at all. Research across domains shows that it is only by working at what you can't do that you turn into the expert you want to become. Erickson calls it deliberate practice, to distinguish it from what most of the rest of us get up to. I'm going to call it purposeful practice. Why? Because the practice sessions of aspiring champions have a specific and never-changing purpose. Progress. End quote. Deliberate practice, purposeful practice, or painful practice. Choose the term that helps you appreciate the importance of stretching yourself beyond your comfort zone to gain true mastery of yourself and your desired craft. Insight number four, the myth. Quote, the myth goes like this. Your calling, if it comes at all, is something that arrives one day on your doorstep in a neatly wrapped package. You don't have to worry about exerting any effort or anything. It'll just work out. And if it doesn't, then it wasn't meant to be. Sorry, you must be doomed to dwell in the cubicle for the rest of your life, ecking out a mediocre existence. At least you can live vicariously through those fortunate few who do get to find their calling. Of course we know this isn't true. We all want to believe we have the opportunity to find a life of meaning and purpose, to do work that matters. So why does such a life seem so evasive? And why is it so rare? Because we've believed in this myth that we will just know when it's our time to commit. And that's hardly ever the case. Commitment is costly. It should scare us, end quote. I don't know about you, but I bought into that myth for far too many years. I assumed that if my life had a calling, it would reveal itself in some way. I was well aware that I wasn't doing what I was put on this earth to do, but that was all the information I had to work with. I was expecting Amazon to deliver my calling to my doorstep. I was looking for the easy button. The only way to truly discover your calling is to recognize that it's a journey and that it requires you to take some action. You must start by putting one foot in front of the other and then be prepared to deal with uncertainty. You won't know for sure you're on the right path, but you're still required to act. Quote, This is how callings happen. Not as a lightning bolt, but as a gentle, consistent prodding that won't leave you alone until you act. That you respond to the call, not how, is what makes it extraordinary. End quote. Insight number five. The power of the pivot. Quote, In basketball, you are only allowed to take two steps once you stop dribbling the ball. When you take that last step, the foot you land on becomes what's called a pivot foot. That foot must remain fixed, but the other foot can freely move about, allowing you to easily spin around and find a teammate to whom you can pass the ball. Although you are confined to where you are and how many steps you can take, at no point are you locked in any direction. That's the beauty of the move. Even when all other opportunities are exhausted, you can always pivot. End quote. I love this analogy of the pivot and how it translates to our life. Are you currently frustrated with the progress in your life or fed up with failure after failure as you pursue your dream? I think we should all take comfort in the fact that when we feel that we are the furthest from our purpose, we are in reality already on the path and slowly moving in the right direction. It's at that moment when you feel lost and ready to throw in the towel that you may be closer to your destiny than you realize. Quote, the message of the pivot is that what looks like failure now is preparation for what's to come, as long as you don't give up. So what separates a season of failure from a lifetime of failure? First, you must be willing to recognize hardship as an opportunity to learn, willing yourself to push through failure. Second, you must be careful to not succeed at the wrong things. You have to pay attention to passion and beware of the temptation of success. It's not enough to be good at something. You must focus on what you're meant to do and appreciate that your understanding of that, over time, just might change. So be ready to make pivots along the way. Your life's work is not a single event, but a process you are constantly perfecting, finding new ways to put your passion to work. And you do that, one pivot at a time. End quote. How is your pivot? More importantly, how willing are you to pivot in this journey to your calling? If you're just starting out on your journey, or even if you're many years into it, just appreciate that things may not work out as you originally planned. 
Never lose trust in your ability and develop the mental toughness that's required to be willing to pivot. I would much rather pivot than simply give up because things didn't go as planned. Insight number six, the portfolio life. Quote, The basic idea of the portfolio life is that instead of thinking of your work as a monolithic activity, what if you chose to see it as the complex group of interests, passions, and activities it is? And what if you, instead of identifying with a job description, you began to see the whole mass of things you do as one portfolio of activity? As I've already said, a calling is more than a career. It's the purpose and direction of your life, which means that it doesn't just apply to what you do. It's who you are. End quote. The portfolio life is a more well-rounded view of your life. You're not a robot that is programmed to just do one thing. You likely have many interests that make up who you are. The workforce dynamic has changed. The days of starting out in a job or one company and making a career of it are long gone. Living a portfolio life means you learn and grow from all those experiences that make you a more well-rounded person, ready to take on the next challenge in life. Your portfolio is not only made up of work, it includes your family life and what you do for play as well. The books you read and your taste in music contribute to the portfolio you are building for your life. Quote, There must be something bigger than what you do that guides you through the choices you make, the risks you take, and the opportunities you pursue. In many ways, this is the reason you work at all. It's the work behind the work. And although it may not take eight hours a day, without a why behind the what you do, your career becomes meaningless and useless. End quote. Insight number seven, true mastery. Quote, when the world seems to conspire against you and when everyone around you calls you a failure, true masters keep going. Even when others don't understand, masters recognize their allegiance is to a higher calling than pleasing the masses. True mastery is about greatness, about doing something that pushes the limitations of what others think is possible or even sensible. Peter Serge, a professor at MIT, describes mastery as something that goes beyond competence and skills. It means approaching one's life as a creative work, end quote. In the Optimized Coach program, we talked a lot about going from theory to practice to mastery. It really stuck with me, and I've tried to apply this to so many areas of my life. As George Leonard says in his great book, Mastery, quote, We fail to realize that mastery is not about perfection. It's about a process, a journey. The master is the one who stays on the path day after day, year after year. The master is the one who's willing to try and fail and try again for as long as he or she lives, end quote. I would urge you to accept the challenge of pursuing mastery and begin that journey today. That is my quick look at this wonderful book, The Art of Work by Jeff Goins. The real life stories in this book will inspire you to discover your calling in life. So don't hesitate to get this book if that is what is missing in your life. You've been listening to Philosopher Insights with your host, Herb Lambert. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review. To go deeper with me, you can register for free at www.philosopherinsights.com for instant access to a growing library of Philosopher Insights, which are 8 to 10 page PDFs, plus 20 minute MP3s that break down my favorite insights from the world's best personal development books. To catch all the latest from me, you can follow me on Facebook at Optimal Herb. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.